Well, can you tell us uh, who sure. you are? And, uh, sure. Hi, guys. I'm, uh, my name is John Lee. I'm the CEO of Hanson Robotics. Uh, Dr. Hanson, the founder of the company, sends his regards. He's actually still in Hong Kong. Uh, the company was founded in Plano, Texas, of all places. And uh, he's been in, uh, the company has been in R&D mode and innovation mode for about 10 years. Uh, about a year ago, we established an office in Hong Kong to really start commercializing the product uh, and to be able to be a little bit, uh, it's a lot easier to bring the best talent around the world, whether you know, you're from Texas or from Russia or from, we have an office in Lithuania, for example, to Hong Kong than it is to the U.S. these days. So, uh, yeah, so we are based in, I'm based in Hong Kong. Uh, we've been uh, working kind of in stealth mode for the past year to really kind of, uh, take every, all the research and all the great work that Dr. Hansen's done and really kind of, you know, put some, throw some engineers at it to make sure that it works every time. <laughs> uh, and so we are in the business of making, you know, the most expressive human robots in the world. Uh, if you've looked, uh, maybe if you've seen online, uh, you know, our Einsteins or our Philip K. Dick robots, uh, the University of California, San Diego has a Diego robot. Uh, our, we've done a few Philip K. Dicks with our own character engines and, you know, they've had, they've been interviewed by PBS and, by Wired Magazine and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, we have been so far focused on uh, in serving the research and research community. So, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Bristol Robotics Lab, Cambridge University, KAIST, mm -hmm. uh, University of Pisa, University of Geneva, uh, University of Texas. Uh, but going forward, we're really focused on, you know, using the best of, uh, I mean, over the past 10 years, you know, well, you guys, you guys know better than me, the kind of, uh, all the enabling technologies, you know, that really can bring robotics and service robotics, you know, to, to another level have tripled, have gone up 10x, you know, whether it's cloud computing or whether it's uh, the power of specific devices, the natural language, the artificial intelligence, the emotion engines. I mean, if you just look online, the, the number of guys that make pretty good face, body, and, and uh, uh, voice, text, as well as inflection-based emotion engines, just that alone, right? And the, the technology and the, uh, the, the progress people have made in terms of being able to better understand human beings, to be able to properly provide great service, right? Uh, that's just really kind of, you know, just, just catapulted over the past 10 years. And so, uh, you know, we, we feel this is, it's a really great time to do, to focus on a few things that, um, we have found are extremely expensive and people are not good at. And there's a massive shortage of people for specific, especially, uh, you know, uh, some of our challenges like healthcare. So for example, uh, you know, I don't know if any of you have or know any autistic children, right? But to do social therapy, try to mainstream autistic kids, you know, the, the, the national recommendation is 30 to 40 hours of intense one-on-one -on -one social therapy. Nobody has the money for that, including the U.S. government. Okay, most kids get two to three hours if they're lucky, and the difference between three hours and 30 hours is massive, and it's over two, you know, one to two years. Uh, the, the typical cost for, to, 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 you know, to care for autistic children now mm -hmm. runs between one and 200,000 US dollars. Okay, so whether an individual pays for that, or you know, we all pay for it, because that's, that's the community we are, uh, that's a large number. But the bigger tragedy is it, the work and the, where the money goes, it's, it's actually not particularly efficient. So if you, for, you know, I'm just di diving a little bit, if you know, you know, if you've ever met an autistic child, one of the things that you'll notice immediately is they can't maintain eye contact with you. That's correct, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, I mean, a lot of, you know, what you guys know already, there's a big difference between processing in silicon and processing in software, right? When it comes to voice, this is a, pretty primitive kilobit signal, yes? Right? When you wave your hands up and down, it's megabits, right? But your face is throwing off gigabits of data, right? You're throwing all the micro expressions that generate real time, all the time, right? Mainstream people use the back of our heads, you know, hardwired through natural selection or creation, right? To be able to consume and analyze and digest real time all that massive stream of data, right? Autistic kids don't have it back here. Their GPU is wired differently, right? And so that's, so when they look at human beings, they're way overstimulated. So imagine trying, you know, if you, in a 40 hour week, when a social therapist, you know, bless her heart, right? Tries to get the autistic child to pay attention. Half of the challenge is getting the child to look at her, hmm. right? And then, again, you guys are all, you know, uh, I'm sure all of you guys code. The second half of the challenge, before you can even get into the therapy, is 
because they don't have what's, what we would deem as common sense, autistic children, right? It's a different set of wiring. If you try to teach a child, you know, what the consequence, what it means when someone else smiles at you, if you smile just a little bit differently the next time, as far as that child is concerned, it's a fork in code. Hmm. So imagine a human being trying to do this exercise one-on-one, -on -one, full-time, 40 hours per week, trying to smile exactly the same way, right, for two years. You have a different therapist, it starts all over again, you're forking, wow. right? Uh, imagine, think about uh, life companions, right, for shut-ins or elder care, right? And we're not talking about folks that, you know, can't help themselves, but, you know, so many folks, 99.5% of the time, everything is fine. But if they're usually spending their time alone, right, A, the health consequences of isolation are, are pretty well documented. But, you know, if you have folks with like early, you know, early onset dementia or Alzheimer's where everything is fine except for that one second, all of a sudden, boom, right? Grandma's just kind of forgotten just for a sec where she is now, right? The way rich folks take care of it is they hire, you know, somebody, whether it's a registered nurse or a caregiver. But a lot of times, you know, if you can imagine what happens. So this young lady is with the, you know, the, with grandma. And grandma says the same darn story 50 times a day. Right? Every day. Within a month, no matter how wonderful the caregiver is, you just tune it out. You can't, you can't deal with it. Right? And then you stop caring, and then you start getting cases of abuse. Right? Ultimately, though, human beings aren't going to be awake 24 hours a day. They're not going to be tied in to be able to monitor and be completely dedicated and focused on the client. Imagine, but we know what happens when you are panicking or you've forgotten who you are. When I forget who I am, my blood pressure goes up, my heart rate goes up, my voice pattern changes. These are all things that robots, if they're, if they're, if they're committed to you, they'll know immediately that something is going on, right? They'll start recording immediately. They'll notify the doctor or the caregiver and, you know, the son or daughter, right? You never miss the episode. And you can have the human robot, which is what the easiest, le the least traumatic interface, right? Because we're all, that's, that's what we're used to. Really kind of try to stabilize the situation. Maybe the doctor wants the robot or the caregiver, you know, to be able to just start throwing facts at grandma. You know, Martha, everything's great. It's Sunday, you just had lunch with your grandson, and you just keep doing it until you just see the blood pressure and heartbeat come down. To be able to manage these situations. I mean, who's been in a hospital recently? Right? How many seconds a day do you see a nurse or a doctor? <laughs> right? All nine. All nine? Okay. All nine. Every <laughs> day. If you, if you think, if you look at the data, the vast majority of healthcare dollars are because, you know, you get, you get the infection in the hospital, right? Making mistakes, right? Or not addressing a problem until it's too late, right? We just know this. Nurses do a great job helping doctors when things are busy to be 80% efficient. That's why when we're in a hospital, we see the doctor for 90 seconds, right? And it's gone. But the concept, the cost of that is the nurse is about 20% efficient. So they're overworked, stressed out, underpaid. And they're not practicing medicine. They're doing everything other than medicine, right? You know from your smartphone what your smartphone can do, right? If you had a human interface, someone doing rounds, because we, we're not in the matrix and we don't want a camera just looking at you 24 hours a day, right? Just using standard facial recognition, the same stuff people use at, a, at, a, at an airport, they, you can avoid, you can start making some real progress. Facial identification based, you're in the right hospital, you're in the right bed. I can tap into your HIPAA compliant cloud database so I know everything about you and why you're in the hospital, I know where your vital statistics should be. And every 15 minutes when I'm actually doing rounds again for the first time in ages, and I see you and I greet you and I smile, and I notice your temperature is elevated, you know, the way medicine and nursing works, I can ask you, because the database tells me what, the, what we believe the diagnosis to be, the 12 questions that matter. A registered nurse in, in, a, in a market such as Manila, right? There's 300,000 registered nurses in Manila waiting for their U.S. or Canadian passport visa, hmm. right? Because it's 300 bucks a month in Manila, 8,000 bucks a month in Los Angeles. 24-hour shift, 2.5, $20,000. I would do it. I would totally get in line. 
let's say we pay her $1,000, which makes her extremely comfortable in Manila. She doesn't have to leave her kids or her family. She can, both kids go to private school, and she can afford her mortgage. She actually can buy a house. But she monitors 10 or 20 human robot caregivers that do the rounds, right? Just like a knock center for a network, right? Or a security center. And as soon as something happens, we go through the process and you're getting a human being and a artificially intelligent diagnosis. The nurses who are at the hospitals, we still need them, are now actually able to be paid more and less stressed out and to be 70, 80% of this, as nurse practitioners, they come in, he would come in, John would come in, if the robot and the, and the same wonderful lady in Manila that would have been here anyway working for Kaiser Permanente, both agree. She they, they need to see Nurse John. And if Nurse John believes, yes, I think you need to, you know, Dr. Mary needs to talk to you, that's the way it would work. But the ability for service robotics to deal with situations where people, just like the old days where you have to stand guard, right, in front of a fence, right, and 99.9% .9 of the time nothing happens. Right? Those are kinds of inefficiencies that, you know, are becoming harder and harder to afford. But in any event, healthcare is a big deal for us. Uh, education is a big deal for us. Uh, going and offering the best technology in the world at much more practical, realistic pricing is a big deal for us. And that's one of the reasons we, we actually have people in all over the world, Austin, Texas, London, uh, Vancouver. Uh, over the next year, uh, we actually are going to be re announcing our very first production production grade, commercial grade, standardized male and female human robots at DLD mm -hmm. in Munich in a week and a half. Uh, well. We are going to be announcing, who's familiar with the NOW robot? Okay. We're going to be announcing something about that size generating real human expression for less than the NOW robot. That's also tied mm -hmm. into much easier content creation tools. Right? It doesn't matter how human your face is if you can't generate the expressions or the dialogue. So one of the demonstrations we want to show you today is how we are trying to bring the robot world and the video game world together. Right? Robot folks, if you look at the kind of folks that do Boston Dynamics, they don't generate a lot of content. Half of our ro robot guys are Spectrum people. They don't deal well with human beings. Just the way it is, you know? But they're brilliant, right? 